Hello, and welcome to the CDC.gov tutorial. CDC stands for Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and it can be reached at www.cdc.gov. The first thing I'd like to point out is the search bar. You can go ahead and put something like rabies in the search bar and come up with links to rabies, rabies in kids, rabies vaccine, etc. To simplify matters, we're going to use the tabs and also let you know that CDC does have social media. They're on Facebook and they're on Twitter. They also use several other media websites, social media websites, and so it may be easier to connect uh, by using that. And you may be able to get some fast answers and connect with other community members. To simplify matters rather than going through searches, I'm going to go through the tabs on top and introduce you uh, to a great resource for librarians, for teachers, for parents, travelers, human beings. So the first tab is diseases and conditions. The first drop down box gives you from A, goes in alphabetical order, ADHD, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, sexually transmitted diseases, and the last one on this drop down is data and statistics. Data and statistics are very important for programming, um, for grant writing, when you have any group, even if it's not grants, if you have a friends of the library or uh, state legislatures or secretaries or treasurers that want statistics before they will fund something or want statistics for afterward, this is a wonderful place to go which represents very many different populations. Also under diseases and conditions, along with everything else, you can click on more. So you can get more than that just simple drop down. And from A to Z, you've got a wide, wide spectrum of diseases, um, ailments, different things that affect human health. There are um, a lot of links at the bottom for related centers and other programs, again, that are health related. And they have a disease of the week highlighted on the very first page. Next, the next tab is healthy living. This is for preventative care, preventative living, preventative lifestyles, um, food safety, adolescent and school health, overweight, obesity, smoking and tobacco use, and hand washing. Again, we've got more. There are a many list of different things that people deal with every day and a lot of times they have questions. Uh, sometimes they're afraid to ask the doctor. This is a really great place to send them. It is a free website. All of the resources in here are free. Uh, it talks about life stages, specific populations, and um, one thing that I wanted to point out is dis um, diabetes prevention. Uh, one there are a lot of young adults and teens who find themselves diagnosed with diabetes too, and it is um, very traumatic and it's hard to live with and um, because their health is severely affected. So there are a lot of local groups, there's a lot of national groups, there are a lot of resources to help not only the patient but the parents, the school, the teachers, the providers. Um, there's just a world of links in here that can help. Next, Traveler's Health for those that are going to be traveling for school, going to other countries for classes, uh, going to visit family, just going on vacation. Um, there's a lot of different things that are happening in different places. It's nice to know. 
uh, the, there may be um, flooding, earthquakes, natural disasters, um, there's a disease directory. If you're going to be traveling, there's a resource where you can possibly locate a clinic before you go. Uh, there is the Yellow Book, which is a resource that is published every year through the Oxford University um, Press. It is good for travelers. Um, destinations, you may be thinking about going somewhere. You may check that destination. If there are traveler notices, like say um, you're thinking about going somewhere, if there is something going on with disease or something that would affect human health, they'll have um, possibly, if a warning level 3, that is something that you just want to avoid on down to green. Uh, again, each time you click on any of these links and pages, it'll just give you a world of information. Emergency preparedness. Um, we live in the South. It is. It seems like it's hurricane season all the time. We have thunderstorms, high-line winds, flooding. Uh, Montana has snow right now, so it's really good to to know what's not only going on with us, but with other people. You know, other places where we have, may have loved ones. Um, this includes. Even um, mass casualties, chemical emergencies, um, and recent outbreaks and stuff like that. Natural disasters, again. And so when I clicked on more, of course, we've got the Zika mosquito right on top there. Um, there is a Public Health Matters blog. Uh, they talk about the, the disasters and crises that are happening that affect human health. Um, information for specific groups, um, emergency preparedness, and you. Um, this is so that if you do want to be a little bit more prepared, uh, these are suggestions and ideas to get a kit, be informed, um, to help you to find out what to do and be ready. Um, here is one of the children's uh, resources that as a librarian, as a, an educator, as a parent, as a big sister, big brother, you can um, get these free resources for kids and make learning fun and maybe not as frightening. Uh, there is an app, there are books, and there are checklists, and the books you can download as a PDF, and oftentimes they come in more than um, uh, several different languages. And so this is um, an opportunity. A lot of the government websites actually do have free posters, bookmarks, different things for kids and educators and librarians fall under the educators. And so it's not for profit, nonprofit. A lot of times there are resources out there. And again, these are all free. Uh, there are videos, there are partnerships. Uh, there's just a world of information here that again is well, uh, heavily relied on, uh, well trusted, and updated very frequently and free. So the last thing that I'd like to touch on is uh, sorry for the delay. Backing out of here. Backing out. Backing out. Anyway, the last subject that I'd like to talk about, um, there are a, a lot of topics that you can find in the CDC. Um, vital statistics is something that, it's like the pepper. You uh, don't know that you need it until you're out and that, you know, it's just, um, you would never really, I mean, the times that you're going to need vital statistics, meaning a birth certificate, a death certificate, marriage uh, records, or divorce records, it's 
just something that a lot this is a question that comes up and uh, usually again after times of disaster uh, after theft after tornado people lose their um, records or for those in genealogy and in history and uh, different things helping people get identifications helping people just helping people a lot of times they're going to need these records and so if you go you can go county by county state by state um, and it, it can be a very tedious search but the CDC does have where to write for vital records when you click on that link after doing a search for vital records you click on the link and you'll see all of the states and holdings in the United States are included in here um, every every one state Puerto Rico North Dakota Florida but I'm gonna click on Mississippi since we are Mississippi University and so if you are in need of a birth certificate death certificate marriage record or divorce record um, there are addresses here and costs associated with those records um, for those that are doing genealogy the birth and death records in Mississippi go back to 1912 and marriage records ha are, have different spans and this varies by state state by state there are different rules and regulations and um, most of the time you're going to need an ID some of these places you, that you, they say write to them or call them a lot do have a link on Mississippi birth and death it shows there is a link where you can order them those are usually a little bit more expensive here you can see that the birth and death records are, and marriage records are $17 a copy um, they do want you to have the exact dates make sure and read, read the requirements before you send your money off and uh, I hope this does help and uh, good luck and happy researching